Hope you're doing good. Hope you're living blessed. We about to get started. Got a little bit of a late start, but hey, you know how it is sometimes. We just going to roll with the punches, keep it going, keep it moving. But I hope y'all living well. Today we diving into Romans chapter 4, and we going to dive right in. So really quick, I want to give a quick recap on uh, Romans chapters 1, 2, and 3. So in Romans chapter 1, uh, Paul talked about how all humanity is trapped in sin and needs to be rescued. So he talked about how um, the righteous shall live by faith. He talks about how um, the unrighteous people were living, how they were stuck in sin. And then in chapter 2, he talks about how rescue won't happen by trying to obey the laws of the Torah. See, the, the Jewish Christians in Rome who Paul's writing this letter to, they were like, well, we're God's chosen people, so we're good, we're free from uh, our sin, or we're, we're already welcome into God's kingdom because we're born of the descendants of Abraham. So because of that, because we're God's chosen people, we're good, we're justified. But Paul comes in and he's like, in chapter 2, he's like, or in chapter 3 rather, that y'all are... Uh, just as guilty too. Y'all just as guilty as the Gentile Christians, you know, even though y'all had the law, like that makes y'all more guilty. So in chapter two, he talked about how, you know, rescue is not going to happen by just trying to obey the laws of the Torah. So then in chapter three, which I talked about last week, I talked about how God's righteousness has rescued the world through Jesus, through faith, not through works, but through Faith, And so we're going to continue on in that. In chapter 4, he's going to give us an example of what that means, this idea of being justified by faith. But that's a really quick recap. So remember, Paul is writing this letter to the Romans, to the church in Rome, because there was a lot of division. There was a lot of... Uh, uh, Jewish Christians who were saying that the Gentiles, they needed to obey the kosher laws, they needed to circumcise themselves, they needed to um, obey the Sabbath and do all these things. And then you had the Gentile Christians who were talking about how they, how they were free in Christ. And so Paul wrote this letter to unify the church. So how Romans 3 ends, Paul's talking about how we're saved, we're justified through faith. And so let's really quick, let's turn to the scripture. Romans chapter, I'm going to go back. Romans chapter 3, I'm going to read the last verse. Romans 3, 31. Do we then overthrow the law by this faith? By no means. On the contrary, we uphold the law. So justification by faith does not nullify the law. It establishes it. So then here we go. Let's move on. Romans chapter 4. Abraham justified by faith. Verse 1, it says this, What then shall we say was gained by Abraham, our forefather according to the flesh? So now what Paul is going to do, he's going to introduce an example of this being justified by faith. What then shall we say was gained by Abraham, our forefather according to the flesh? Verse 2, For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about but not before God. So what Paul is saying, he's like, well, if it's the works that Abraham did, if that's what saved him, if that's what, if that's what made him right with God, then he has something to boast about. Sure, he can be proud. He can go around saying, hey, guys, look at all the works that I did. Look at all the people I've helped or whatever, but not before God. But not before God, because that is not what truly justifies you before God. It's not your works, but it's your faith. He goes on verse three. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness. So here he's quoting Old Testament scripture. That's a quotation from Genesis chapter 15, verse six. Abraham believed God. Not he worked for God. But he believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness. So Paul is going to say that it was the fact that Abraham believed. It was the fact that he had faith. That's what counted him as righteous. Verse 4. Now, to the one who does not work but believes in him who 
justifies the ungodly, his faith. Oh wait, I messed, I messed. Let me back that up. Let me back that up. I read. I read five. Verse four. Now to the one who works, his wages are not counted as a gift, but as his due. So he's saying that if it was justified, or if it was, uh, or rather your works, the things that you do, you know, when you're doing those things, your wages are not a gift. So the fact that um, you work and then you receive like a payment, for example, that's that's what you're due. It's not a gift. You work for it, so you earn it. For example, you know, we work. We have a job. Some of us do, some don't with this whole corona situation. But when you have a job, when you work, eventually you get a paycheck. And that paycheck, it's not a gift. It's not, hey, look, here's $200, $500, $600 or however much your paychecks are. Here's, the, here's your paycheck. I'm giving this to you as a gift. No, that's not why he's giving you the paycheck he's giving that to you because that's or your boss is giving that to you because that's what you are due so paul says in verse four now to the one who works his wages are not counted as a gift but as his due so when you work it's not given to you but you earned the things whatever you're working for so if you're working for a job your due is pay whatever the case may be verse five says this and to the one who does not work but believes in him who justifies the ungodly his faith is counted as righteousness so then he goes not to the person of work but to the person of faith if you have faith you're counted as righteousness so again paul is just pounding counting this idea that we are justified or the truth that we're justified not by our works but by our faith so jesus doesn't or god doesn't give us salvation based off our works because if that's the case if that's the case what paul's saying backing up to verse four you know if if it's our works then god has to give us salvation because that's just what we worked for we have to work for salvation that's what a lot of other religions teach but that's not the one true god that's not how we enter into god's kingdom but in verse five it's through faith that's how we're counted as righteousness. Verse 6. Just as David also speaks of the blessing of, of the one to whom God counts righteousness apart from works. So he talks about in 5 how um, it's faith. And then he talks about in 6 how David spoke of this. 7 and 8. He says, David writes this in Psalms. He says, Blessed are those whose lawless deeds are forgiven. And whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord will not count his sin. And those are quotations from Psalms 32 verses 1 and 2. Blessed are those whose lawless deeds are forgiven and whose sins are covered. And how are your lawless deeds forgiven? How are your sins covered? It's through faith. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord will not count his sin. That's what happens when you believe, when you have the faith of Abraham. Not the works of Abraham, but Paul's saying you have to have the faith of Abraham. That's what counted him as righteous. Verse 9. Is this blessing then only for the uncircumcised or also for the, or is this blessing then only for the circumcised or also for the uncircumcised? For we say that faith was counted to Abraham as righteousness. How then was it counted to him? Was it before or after he had been circumcised? So this question, so then Paul raises this question in verses 9 and 10. When was Abraham counted as righteousness? Was it before he got circumcised? Was it before he got his uh, the foreskin removed from him? Or was it after? That's the question that Paul Paul's about to tackle here. So then he goes on to say, uh, verse 10, How then was it counted to him? Was it before or after? It was not after, but before he was circumcised. Verse 11 says, He received the sign of circumcision as a seal of the righteousness that he had by faith. That he had by faith. While he was still uncircumcised, 
The purpose was to make him the father of all who believe without being circumcised so that righteousness would be counted to him as well. And to make him the father of the circumcised who were not merely circumcised but who also walk in the footsteps of the faith that our Abraham, that our father Abraham had before he was circumcised. So all that to say, Paul is basically saying here that Abraham was justified. He was counted as righteousness before he was circumcised, not after. And this circumcision that he did after was just a symbol of the faith that he already had. And, you know, one thing that I, I think about with, with this is one example, one common example that we can think of today is with regards to uh, baptisms. We have, you know, when you get people accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior, they get baptized. Now, are they saved? Is it before they get baptized or is it after they get baptized that they're saved, that they're right with God, that they're justified? And... This, this idea is, well, the truth is you get baptized after you have faith, after you put your trust in God, not before. So faith first and then circumcision is what Paul is saying happened to Abraham today. Faith first and then you get baptized and then you acknowledge, hey, I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Same concept here. And in verse 12, I want to read that again. He says, um, And to make him the father of the circumcised who are not merely circumcised, but who also walk in the footsteps of the faith that our father Abraham had before he was circumcised. So he's saying that Abraham, God chose Abraham not only to be the father of those who are circumcised, not only to be the father of God's chosen people, the Israelites, but also to the whole nation, but also to those who walk in footsteps of faith. Because as we mentioned earlier, let me quickly find where it is. Uh, chapter 2, verse 29. Let me go, let me go back real quick. Uh, Romans chapter 2, verse 29. He says, but a Jew is one inwardly, and circumcision is a matter of the heart, by the spirit, not by the letter. His praise is not from man, but from God. So then here in verse 4, what he's saying is Abraham was chosen to not only bring the circumcised, God's chosen people, into the kingdom of God, but also the uncircumcised because it's not circumcision that determines whether or not you're part of God's chosen people, but it's by your faith. By your faith. And that's literally the key theme. This, this chapter, chapter 4, is pretty simple. Like literally, the takeaway is by faith. And he's given us an example through Abraham. Let's keep going. Verse 13. For the promise to Abraham and his offspring that he would be heir of the world did not come. Listen to that. For the promise to Abraham and his offspring that he would be heir of the world did not come through the law. But through the righteousness of faith. Again, faith not works. For it is the adherents of the law who are to be heirs. Faith is no. Let me read that again. Verse 14. For if. Make sure I get that if in there. For if it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs. Faith is no. And the promise is void. So what he's saying there in 14. He's saying well if it's the law then God's promise means nothing it's useless that's not it's just rendered void doesn't matter if if that's the case if it's through the law but as we've been talking about earlier it's not through the law it's through faith let's keep going verse 15 for the law brings wrath but where there is no law there is no transgression 
for the law brings wrath. But where there is no law, there is no transgressing. See, the law brings wrath. Why does it bring wrath? Well, because no one can keep the law. And uh, we're here when he's talking about transgressing here at the end of 15, where, where there is no law, there is no transgressing. What he means is uh, this violation of a, of a command, right? If there is no law, you can't violate a command. You know, if there isn't, if there isn't a, a sign that says, hey, speed limit 55 when you're driving down the road, somebody can't stop you and say, hey, you know you were speeding, you were going past 55. Well, no, I wasn't, bro, because you didn't have a sign. There wasn't anything that existed to say speed limit 55. So what he's saying here in 15, if there is no law, then you can't claim that somebody violated the law. That's what he's saying. So then, but what he's also saying, he's saying that the Jews had an even greater responsibility. They had an even greater responsibility for their sin because of the law. If you remember at the end of, of chapter 3, what he say? Let me go back up. He says, do we then overthrow the law by this faith? By no means, but on the contrary, we uphold the law. So we still uphold the law, but here in 15, what he's saying is these Jews, they had an even greater responsibility for their sin because of the law. And they had this, this great need to be saved from God's wrath. They had just as much this need to be saved from God's wrath. And they had just as much need to be justified by faith, just like the Gentiles need to be. Let's keep going. 16. That is why. That is why. Because the law brings wrath. Because no one can keep the law. Because we are all guilty. Because no one is righteous. No, not one. Because no one can hold up to the law. No one can keep the law. No one can follow the law perfectly. That is why, verse 16, it depends on faith in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his offspring to all of Abraham's people not only to the adherent of the law not only to the Israelites to God's chosen people but also to the one who shares the faith of Abraham that's welcoming in not just the Israelites not just the Jews but the Gentiles also, because they ought both, because they both share the faith of Abraham. Let's keep going. Who is the father of us all? Abraham is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. So here Paul quotes um, in 16, he quotes from Genesis chapter 17, verse 5. He says, as it is written, I have made you, that's God's promise to Abraham, I have made you the father of many nations. 18. In hope. In hope. In hope he believed against hope that he should become the father of many nations as he had been told. So shall your offspring be. See, Abraham, he did not think. He's like, how, how am I going to be the father of many nations when I don't even have a son and yo, I encourage you, check out the full story of Abraham, or of Abraham, yeah, go to Genesis chapter, uh, I believe it's 12, start from Genesis 12 and read through like 15, 15 or 16, read through those four or five chapters, and you can read the story of Abraham, how he was old, how his wife was old, they were far past the age of having children, but it was hope, Paul says in 18, in hope, he believed that he should become the father of many nations. Because of his faith, he trusted God. He's like, God, I don't know how you're going to do it, but I trust that you will do it. You know, I think about our, our lives. Do we have hope? Do we have hope against the odds? 
The odds were stacked against Abraham. He was old. His wife was old. But he had hope. But what about you? When stuff doesn't go the way you have planned or when things just seem impossible and it's like there's no way that you're going to break through or when it seems like uh, God made you a promise and you're just not sure how he's going to come through, do you have hope? Do you still hope in the one who made a way for Abraham, the one who justifies us by faith and not by works? It was hope that Abraham had. Do you have hope? Let's keep going. 19. Keeping this idea of hope and faith. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was as good as dead, since he was about 100 years old. So again, he did not weaken. He did not grow weary just because he was old, just because he wasn't supposed to have kids. Or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb, which was his wife. The fact that she was old, the fact that she wasn't supposed to have kids. He did not weaken in faith. He still had the faith. And my prayer for you, listening or watching, is that you too keep the same faith, keep the same hope that Abraham had, that Abraham had. Verse 20, no unbelief made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God. So again, not himself. He was not giving himself the glory, the glory but he gave glory to God. 21, fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Hmm. Fully convinced, not partially convinced, not 80%, 99.9% convinced, but Abraham was fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Are you convinced? Do you have the faith? Do you have the hope to still trust God? It's not your works. But it's your faith. And Paul is showing us Abraham had faith. If you notice, he isn't saying anything about Abraham's works here. He wasn't saying, oh, it was because Abraham, you know, plowed the fields. Or it's because Abraham was uh, such a good person to the community or whatever the case may be. But it's the fact that he believed. The fact that he had hope. The fact that, as it says in 21, he was fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. And I pray that you can have that same hope that Abraham had. I'm going to keep saying that and keep saying it because it's true. We need that faith. We need that hope. 22. That is why. Because of Abraham. Because of his faith. Because of his hope. 22. That is why his faith was counted to him as righteousness. Because he didn't weaken. Because he grew strong in his faith. Because he gave glory to God. That is why his faith was counted to him as righteousness. 23. Three more verses. But the words it was counted to him were not written for his sake alone. So what Paul is saying is not only was it counted to Abraham as righteousness, not only was it Abraham's faith that saves him, but for ours also. But the words it was counted to him were not written for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be counted to us who believe in him who raised from the dead Jesus our Lord who was delivered up from our trespasses and raised for our justification. Boy, that's deep. So not only did Abraham have faith, but now Paul turns to the church in Rome, the people he's writing this book to. Not only was it counted to Abraham, but it's also counted to them. If you have faith, 
And also for us today, if we have faith, we can be counted. We can be counted to God as righteous. We can be declared righteous. We can be free from guilt, free and forgiven. We can be brought into a new family, into God's family. And we can be given a new future, a transformed life. So, pretty simple. What Paul says in chapter 4, he gives us an example. He's been talking a lot in the first uh, three chapters that it's works, or that's faith, not works. Let's not get those mixed up. It's faith, not works. And here he gives us an example. It was Abraham's faith, not his works. See, God wanted to create a family, a family for both the Jews and the Gentiles through Abraham. And it was his faith. And so that's the end. That's, that's Romans chapter 4. And really what these first four chapters do is they set the basis. They're the foundation for the rest of what Paul is going to talk about in the rest of this, this book. So he establishes the foundation that, it's, that we're justified not by works but by faith. And he's going to continue on to talk about peace with God through faith. He's going to continue to talk about how um, slaves, you know, are righteous, how we're released from the, from the law and things like that. So these first four chapters are the foundation for what Paul is going to talk about in the rest of this letter, in the rest of this book. But it's pretty simple. Faith. And so reflection question that I have for, for, for you today is do you have the same faith that Abraham had? Or are you weakened in your faith? Do you, when the, when the odds are stacked against you, what do you do? Do you tremble in fear? Do you give up? Do you throw in the towel? Do you say, oh man, I can't do this no more? Or do you hold fast and you trust God? Are you fully convinced that God is able to do what he had promised, as Paul said in verse 21? I pray that you have the same faith, that you have the same hope that Abraham had, that you are not weakened in faith. Even when the odds are stacked against you, even no matter how old you are, no matter what happened in your past, I pray that you can still continue to have faith in the one true God. Let us pray. Father, Father God, I thank you. I thank you for this word. I thank you for this truth, for this reminder, God, that even Abraham, even he was justified by faith, not because of he was circumcised, but it was because of the faith. And so, Father, I pray that you help each and every one of us to have that same faith, Lord, to understand that it is in our works, to understand that all of us fall short, to understand that no one is righteous, no, not one. But God, we can be declared righteous through faith. So help us, Lord, to trust you, to trust in your promises, both the promises in this scripture and the promises you've given to us individually as people. God, help us to trust you, to trust your plan, to trust in your will and not ours. As, as Jesus said, as he taught us how to pray, may your kingdom come, may your will be done. God, we thank you. I thank you for anybody who tuned in, anybody who watched, anybody who listens. And I also pray for those who, who didn't. Help each and every one of us all across the world to understand that we can never work towards grace, but it's faith. So God, we love you. We thank you so much. It's in Jesus that I pray these things. Amen. Amen. Well, thank y'all so much for tuning in. And I encourage you to share this video. If you found uh, any insight, if you took something away, please feel free. Drop it in the comments. I greatly appreciate it. Just, just to read how this chapter um, impacted you or what's something you took away. Let me know. Comment. TikTok fam. 
Love y'all. Instagram. Love y'all too. Facebook. YouTube. LinkedIn. Wherever you watching this. I just want to say that God is good. He is risen. Keep the faith. No matter what. Scotty bruh. And until next time. Grace. Peace.